We struggle with units of measurement all the time on our channel, and it's something that we get a lot of comments about. Pro tip, use the metric system. Why don't system. you use the metric system, man? So annoying. Metric, please. Just use the fucking metric system, for God's sake. We interview scientists, engineers, and other researchers, but they live in a metric world. We then have to turn around and make a video, but around half of our audience is American. So if we say something in centimeters or kilograms, it could trip up a lot of our viewers. We've tried going back and forth. We should make an executive decision if I'm using Fahrenheit or Celsius. Um, it's like three, isn't it three something feet? We should know this. <laughs> we put conversions in parentheses on screen, but it's a mess. And we want to know why. Almost everyone on the planet uses the metric system. But why has the United States held out? Well, there are a ton of reasons, both big and small. But here are three reasons that we've never considered before. Reason number one, US measures are dumb, but they make sense. Officially, the United States uses a system known as the US customary measures. It's adapted from the imperial system that we inherited from our British forefathers, and we've clung to their feet and ounces ever since. The UK is now officially metric based, but in practice, imperial units are sticking around there too. I'm in such a quandary. I wake up in kilograms, I go to bed in ounces, I, you know, do I measure things by meters or feet? I don't know. It's actually, no, it's fine. It's fine. That's James Vincent, a reporter for The Verge. James lives in the UK, but writes for a US based publication, so he's pretty familiar with the headaches caused by juggling two systems of measurement. I put it along as a prop, but now I haven't had a chance to use it yet. <laughs> James says feet and ounces might be clunky, but the US and the UK haven't ditched them because they just work. A foot, for example, is more relatable than a meter, which was originally defined as one ten millionth the distance from the equator to the North Pole. A foot is what it sounds like. An inch is about the width of an adult thumb. If you have a body, you can use these measures. Some people argue, and I think there's a decent case to be made, that they are sort of on a human scale. And while many European countries ditched their old measures because they were irregular or confusing, America's units were just more consistent right from the get-go. US has started on a stronger footing than many European countries did. They have had good, consistent weights and measures, and consistency matters far more than what unit you're actually using. The point is, the US system has always been a little more accessible than metric. Sure, stacking up 12 thumb widths to make a foot that's still kind of weird, but it's not so weird that we're clamoring to change it. Reason number two, Americans can't be bothered to switch. Adopting the metric system is something that a majority of Americans would have to get behind. There'd need to be a popular movement. And very recently, one man tried to make that happen. We took a trip to Rhode Island to talk to Lincoln Chafee. He's a former senator, Rhode Island governor, and presidential candidate in 2016. And he had a grand vision for taking the US metric. I think America should be behaving a little more in the, uh, along with the other civilized countries. And it just makes sense when our two closest countries, Mexico and Canada, both have metric. So it's a, as an international uh, forward-looking way of where America's going is how I got interested in promoting the metric system. Lincoln ran on his Prosperity Through Peace platform, which focused less on military spending and more on infrastructure, education, and generally making friends with other countries. Countries. But he tacked one extra point onto his platform that seemed pretty faded to backfire. Earlier, I said, let's be bold. Here's a bold embrace of internationalism. Let's join the rest of the world and go metric. I just kept saying, Stephanie was right, my wife was right. Never should have brought it up. I remember exactly when I was reading her the speech, right near where we're sitting right now. And uh, she said, don't put the metric in there. It's going to be misinterpreted. But I wanted to test. Can America, can we have a conversation about some controversial things? Unfortunately for Lincoln, his test was pretty conclusive. Chafee said an important part of his platform is getting the U.S. to finally adopt the metric system. Lincoln Chafee. He'll be out of this race in 0.2 nanoseconds. Yeah, Lincoln Chafee's odds of getting the U.S. to finally embrace the metric system are probably about as long as Lincoln Chafee's odds of getting to be the next president of the United States. But uh, my wife was right. It was totally misinterpreted and ridiculed and 
mocked and nobody ever asked about any of the other issues. Lincoln withdrew from the race in 2015. I have decided to end my campaign for the president today. And with him went any hope of conversation around metric. Though Lincoln still holds out hope. But ultimately people have a, an affection for America and it's still there. Uh, and we should be building on it instead of driving a wedge into our differences with countries around the world. And metric's just part of it. It's a good symbolic part of it. The moral of the story, don't hold your breath for a metric uprising in America. Almost every nation on earth has fallen under the yoke of tyranny, the metric system. But for what it's worth, we might actually be in the middle of a much sneakier metric takeover. Reason number three, the US is secretly already metric. The US may not be officially metric, but meters and kilograms have found their niches. First, US scientists do not mess around with US measures. Metric was designed by scientists and who primarily, you know, they were annoyed about inconsistencies within the, the systems they were currently using. The metric system uses standard consistent prefixes based on powers of 10. So if you know your prefixes, you can measure a lot or a little of anything using one base unit. Whether you're doing sort of very precise measurements in chemistry or you're looking at astronomical differences, that's where metric is useful because you can just move, if you want to move the unit, you just, you know, move the decimal point. Industry is largely on board with metric as well. In 1988, Congress passed a bill which required federal agencies to use metric measurements. Another bill in 1992 required businesses to use metric for consumer goods too. Ever wonder why your soda can lists both ounces and milliliters? And last but not least, imperial units are now technically based on metric definitions. An inch is defined as 25.4 millimeters, and a pound is 0.4535237 kilograms. Metric really is everywhere. You've got the scientific standards at the heart of the scientific community. You've got companies, they're metric. And you might have, as we do in the UK, certain examples where other units are used in day-to-day -day life, but where it counts, America is metric. There you have it. The US is one big measurement gray area. We haven't officially switched to metric, but we haven't shunned it either. It's a compromise between science and industry, which benefit from metric, citizens who feel no reason to change, kilograms, and a government that's trying to keep everyone happy. Ultimately, there's only one way that James thinks this story ends. As you know, the US is already metric, essentially. It just has this facade of, uh, of measures. The, the thing to do is just to wait for that facade to slowly crumble away, and that will happen with time. When that change happens, you can be sure that we at Verge Science will accept it with open arms. Until then, please be patient with us in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.